uh, attempting the live stream here. Uh, <laughs> we're not we're not having much joy tonight. Uh, uh, so I think Aaron is uh, possibly going to share this link on his page. If you can just drop me a, a message, Aaron, when you've done that, then we'll. Uh, the old devil's busy tonight, isn't he? The devil's busy. But we'll not worry about that because the Lord's in control regardless. So uh, I'll, I'll send Aaron a message here. I'm going to say, that's it, there we go. But anyway, we'll get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. You are here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, here we go. Right, that's brilliant. So now I'm now on. Hopefully, hopefully everyone is uh, hearing me. Uh, hopefully, I'm um, hopefully you're all be hearing me now. Sorry about that because we were having some problems. A little later on but uh, I don't know what was going on but anyway let me just you see the devil's busy tonight isn't he because that's that's the that's the enemy attacking because of the gospel message but let me just read the verses again so that because they're great verses Paul writing to young Timothy 1 Timothy 1 15 faithful is the saying what a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me as chief might Jesus Christ show forth all his long suffering for an, an example of them that should thereafter believe on him unto eternal life. This is a great, great portion of scripture as I've already stated before we were interrupted that there's no one like the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no one comes near him. There's no one matches his character, his ability, his sinless, uh, sinless nature, because he is a, a, not. You can't match him. Uh, you can't say he's a moral teacher and a good teacher. You have to bow down like Thomas and declare that he is your Lord and that he is your God. And Paul writing to young Timothy here makes some incredible significant points. The first one, he puts it like this. He says it is a faithful saying or a faithful statement. Some versions of the Bible say it's a faithful statement. And he tells us the reason in this portion of Scripture why the Lord Jesus Christ left the spiritual world or dimension to come into the physical world so full of depravity and sin. You know, as a, a pastor, I often sit back and I ask the question, why would Jesus Christ leave the splendor of the Father to come into a world that is so depraved and filled with sin? And yet the Bible tells us why, doesn't it? The Bible is clear that Christ Jesus came in to the the world to see Jesus Christ came into this world because he loved you and he loved me. He came in with a rescue package, a most wonderful, glorious rescue package in order that we might be set free from our sin and the condemnation that we are under. Jesus Christ did not come into the into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him you see the reason he didn't come in to condemn the world is quite simply because the world is already condemned the world in which we live in tonight is under condemnation so you can't it would be a futile effort to condemn a world that is already condemned and God could have passed judgment due to the condemnation but God bestowed mercy upon us and grace upon us and he demonstrated his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for you and Christ died for me. This is the true message of the gospel. It is the only message that can be trusted. We live in a day, we live in a time when it's difficult to 
get truth out there. There's a lot of arguments going on about the election in America and sometimes it's difficult to, to work out who's telling the truth, uh, 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 whether you can believe the polls or not. And it will be a sad state of affairs if, it, if we find out that the polls can't be trusted, that people are trying to alter votes or whatever it might be. You can't really believe Sky News, you can't really believe the BBC. Now sometimes you can, but the truth is there used to be a day when we saw something on our news screens and we took it as gospel. But that's no longer the case. But when we come to the Word of God, this is a true saying. It can be trusted. It's also a glorious message and it's worthy of everyone accepting it. Not a one person who hears this message should reject this message or ignore the message. The Word or saying that, that, that we hear. We receive from God's word is trustworthy. You can place your faith on it. You can place your faith on it and you will in no way be disappointed. You know, there's not one person, you will not read one person in the New Testament who came to Jesus seeking help, who was left or left disappointed. It's the same for many today. Millions and millions of people are coming to Jesus in repentance. They are recognizing they are sinners because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And they're asking Christ for forgiveness and receiving him as Savior and being set free. And isn't it a wonderful truth tonight, children of God, that we have been redeemed not by corruptible things such as silver or gold, but by the precious, all-atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who among us tonight, who among us tonight, who would we be first to stand on our, our feet and declare that they deserve this great salvation that has been offered to mankind through Christ? Who amongst us tonight would dare stand to their feet and declare their worthiness to be saved in the first instance? Not one, not one, isn't it remarkable? Not one of us are worthy tonight. Our good works are like filthy rags. There is not one individual, there has not never been one individual who is worthy to stand and say, I, I, I am indeed worthy of this salvation. The, the, the plain field at the foot of the cross is level ground and there's no one in this world that is better than anyone else because the Bible tells us in Romans 3 verse 23 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you want to measure your morality, if you want to measure your, your goodness, whatever level of goodness you might think you have, measure it with an almighty, holy, sanctified, sinless Son of God. And then you will soon find out that you fall far, far short. The, the reason the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, the reason that he left a spiritual dimension is quite simply to save you from sin, to save you from your yourself and sin has been likened to a disease and if it's untreated it will lead an individual to eternal damnation. You know Alexander McLaren, a great man of God once said, there are certain diseases of which a constant symptom is unconsciousness that there is anything the matter. A deep-seated wound does not hurt much. Friend I want to say this to you tonight. Uh, those who are outside of Christ and hear this message tonight, is there an, a deep-seated wound? Of course there is. It's a deep-seated wound of sin. It's sin that distances us distances us from God. It's sin that separates us from God. It is sin that cuts us off from God. You might think your sin doesn't hurt much. In fact, it can be enjoyable at times. It can definitely be bearable of dying in your sin. The consequences of dying without Christ are absolutely fatal. Fatal. 
If you're outside of Christ, you're on dangerous ground. You're walking on thin ice because the Bible says there, it is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. Even Israel's greatest king, even King David could say, there is but a step between me and death. And the good news of the gospel, and the good, and the gospel is good news. It's not bad news. You can't, it's not possible to preach a bad news gospel. There's no such thing as a bad news gospel. The gospel is good news. And the claims of the gospel and the truth of the gospel is that the chains of sin can be cut off. The chains can be broken. We can be set free. The Bible also says, He who the Son sets free is Christ free indeed. Christ loses the chains that bind us, the shackles that shackle us by his blood. His blood is like a drop of corrosive acid uh, 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 and it falls on the fetters and it dissolves them and the prisoner goes free, emancipated by the Son of God. Hallelujah! We can go free. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We can go free tonight. The message of the gospel tonight is saying this to you, speaking this to you from the echoes of heaven, from the echoes of the cross, that you can be forgiven of your sin, that you can be set free, that you don't have to fear, you don't have to live an uncertain life in uncertain times, but you can be sure of a Savior who loves you and died for you and has plans for you and purposes for you. Not a Savior who will just save you now, but a Savior who will save you for all eternity. And you will go into that place where there is no pain. There is no death. There is no fear. There are no tears because the former things are all passed away and this has all been made possible because of the Lord Jesus Christ. The satisfaction of God. The satisfaction of God's justice in fulfilling the eternal pronouncement that the wages of sin is death. This is a reason why Christ as a God-man had to die in order to remove sin from man. Your sin and my sin tonight could not be expedited, blotted out without the shedding of blood. No one's sin can be blotted out without the shedding of blood. The death of the Lord Jesus Christ gives us the right to declare all those who put their trust in him righteous before God. And not only that, but he makes the righteousness of God part of all who trust him as Savior and Lord. God's nature becomes our nature and we, when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not just an ordinary man. He's the Son of God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. He's the altogether lovely one. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's a lily of the valley. He's a bright and the morning morning star. I wish I could describe him to you tonight, but he's indescribable. He's a wonderful saviour. He's a gloriously saviour. Jesus not only will save you from sin, but he also saves you from death. Had Jesus Christ been born into the world and died like every other human being without rising from the dead, the news of his coming would not be worthy of all acceptation. Christ not only died, hallelujah, but on the third day, on the third day, he rose again, victorious over sin, victorious over death, and victorious over hell. Dale Moody once said, and what a great statement, Death may be the king of terrors, but Jesus Christ is the king of king. Jesus not only saves us from death, but he saves us from judgment to come. No matter how sinful a person is, that's why Paul said, I am the chief of sinners. No matter how sinful a person is, no matter how great a sin or sins they've committed, Christ Jesus came to save them. He came to set them free. He came to forgive them. And no matter what society may say or even think, I tell you tonight that that person can be gloriously, wonderfully, majestically saved. God is more than able. Paul knew, the Apostle Paul knew what he was talking about. 
uh, when he made such a declaration about the justification and the simultaneous sanctification of the sinner is indeed worthy of all acceptation. The Greek word that Paul used here is found only twice in the New Testament and both in Timothy. Do you know what it means to be accepted? It means to embrace it means to receive with joy and approval as something very precious and something very worthwhile. Oh, glory to God. I know that many here in this message tonight, you'll have loved ones that have gone into eternity. eternity. But the Bible says this, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. You see, that's what, why this message of the gospel is worthy of all acceptation. Because it's a message that we embrace it's a message we receive with joy and it's a message that God approves of you and God approves of me he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him you know the gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ is precious the gospel of Jesus Christ is worthwhile it breaks my heart when people hear this message and they 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 they, they cry out, come back at a convenient time. Or they, they rebuke the message. Or they blaspheme the Lord Jesus Christ. The writer to Hebrews in Hebrews 2 and 3 says, How shall we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which having at the first been spoken through the Lord was confirmed unto <coughs> was confirmed unto us by them that heard my goodness gracious me how can we escape if we neglect this wonderful message of salvation you know what i think sometimes can i be honest with you tonight i think people are insane i really do i think people are insane to reject the message of the gospel i think people are insane to re reject jesus christ and maybe they need a glimpse of the reality of hell. Maybe they need a glimpse of the reality of, of, of Christ, living without Christ and being without Christ the other side of eternity. I don't know, but I think they're totally insane. I think people need to taste and see that the Lord is good. Luke 12 and 19 says, And I will say to my soul, as much good is laid up for many years, take eat, e e e ease. Uh, drink and be merry but God said unto him thy foolish one this night thy soul is required of you and the things which thou hast prepared who shall they be you know we can't take anything with us apart from the salvation that God bestows upon us as salvation and I'm telling you that's all that you need I don't care whether they put me in the ground I don't care why they cr put me in the, 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 the sea. I don't care if I go missing and die somewhere and they don't find my body because I know this tonight. I have this assurance in my heart tonight. Not by the works of righteousness which I have done, but according to his mercy has saved me by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost that he shed on me abundantly, that being justified by his grace I should be made heirs an heir according to the hope of eternal life. And because of that, because of Jesus, I know for me it's absent from the body and it's present with the Lord. Anyone who puts their trust in Christ, it's absent from the body, it's present with the Lord. And every single human being on this earth, every person born into this sin current cursed world is is in, in need in need of God's salvation and once a person has acknowledged this need once they are saved no matter how terrible the sin Christ can and Christ will forgive and Luke 19 and 9 Jesus said unto him today a salvation come to this house for as much as he is also a son of Abraham you see Jesus brings salvation now now is the accepted time Behold, now is a day of salvation. In, in Luke 19 and 10, Jesus says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He's seeking and he's saving. And not only is he seeking, not only is he saving, but he's also keeping. You see, the moment you come to Jesus, people say to me all the time, Pastor, you know, I, I, I'll come to Jesus, but I'm not, I'm not, I'll become a Christian. I'm not sure that, that I could keep it. And I immediately say to them, that's 100% correct. You can't keep it. You won't keep it because we're kept by the power of God. Jesus Christ. 
Christ came into the world to save sinners. And this same Jesus is able to save you. Hebrews 7 and 25 says, Wherefore also he is able to save to the uttermost them that draw near unto God through him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Paul makes known to his readers in these two verses that as far as he is concerned, as far as he is concerned, Christ has saved the chief sinner. And it is true that the worst sins in the world are sins of blasphemy, being filled with anger and malice against Christ, cursing and blaspheming his name with a bitter hostility, persecuting believers and trying to annihilate them off the face of the earth, injuring believers, being brutal and violent against believers and enjoying it. This had been the story of Paul's life. This had been the story of his life. I've just read his life out to you. But let's not forget the wonderful truth. Let's not dismiss the wonderful truth that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul was the chief sinner. And Paul encountered the Lord Jesus Christ on that road to Damascus. And he was wonderfully, gloriously saved. And may ask you tonight, unsaved friend, unsaved friend, this same Jesus who is willing to save you, are you willing to receive him? He is willing to save you. Are you willing to receive him? In fact, Christ will save anyone who confesses that he or she is a sinner. Anyone who confesses they need to be saved. Anyone who sins, who truly confesses and repents of his sin, that moment from Jesus of pardon will receive. No matter how terrible, if you confess it and turn from it, Christ will save you. Christ will set you free because that's the reason he came into this world. That's the reason he died on the cross. That's the reason he rose again. That's the reason he went back to the Father. He came into the world to save sinners for no other purpose other than the purpose of saving you, other than the purpose of saving me. He didn't come into the world for celebrity status. He didn't come in to have his name written up in lights. He came into the world to reach you. He came into the world to reach me. He came into the world to save sinners, to save the hurting, to save the lost, to save the broken, to save the, save the addicted. That's why Jesus came. He came for you tonight. Are you, are you listening to me tonight, friend? Jesus Christ came and 12 says, But when he heard it, he said, They that are whole have no need of a, ph a physician, but they that are sick. You see, Jesus came in for the sick. He came in for those sick with sin. He went on to say, goes on to say in verse 13, But go you and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I have come to call the, not to call the righteous, I've come to call sinners. The whole purpose of Christ was to call sinners. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God commandeth his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't it wonderful? What a, what, a, what a great, great onus is on us tonight. The very thought, just think for a moment, that Jesus Christ, the sinless, spotless Son of God, came into this world to die for you. You, you can't escape if you neglect this salvation. You will be reminded of this on Judgment Day if you don't accept Christ. How can anyone turn their face from that sacrifice? How can anyone turn their face from the freedom that Jesus offers? Proverbs 28 and 13 says, He that covereth his transgressions shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall obtain mercy. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied for me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Jesus saved Paul as a pattern of his great mercy. Paul is a prime example that any sinner, no matter how terrible the sin, can be saved if only he or she will receive Christ and begin to follow and live for him. Let me say to you tonight, whatever it is you're in, Christ can deliver you. Christ can deliver you from the power of sin, no matter how strong the enslavement 
or the addiction is, Christ can deliver you. And it's time, friend, it's time for you tonight to receive the power of Christ into your life and to follow him with a renewed commitment. Do you know what we need today? What we need today in this world is people with a renewed commitment to Christ, a people to go out there and share, share this wonderful, glorious message where it will make a difference. We're, count, we're seeing countless people come to the Savior on the streets. And I want to say these are not people who would come into your church and they would not come into my church. They've never been in church but they're being saved on the streets. Do you know why? Because the gospel works. The wonderful gospel that Jesus came and died for these people is good news they're willing to hear and it's good news that they're willing to receive. There are many individuals tonight, you know of them and I know of them, who have been been saved and set free and who can stand and testify as a dynamic example of God's eternal mercy and God's eternal grace. You know, Jesus declares to us in John 5, 24, he says this, Verily I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth him that sent me hath eternal life and cometh not into judgment, but hath passed uh, uh, out of death into life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour cometh and nigh is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. You see, for the Christian tonight, we're never going to die. We're never going to die. You, 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 you'll blink your eyes close in this earth and you'll open them again in the presence of the Lord. Oh, what a wonderful Savior. When Lazarus was dead and the sister came to Jesus, Jesus made this remarkable statement in John 11 and 25. And what a response. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he die, yet shall he live. And he who believes in me shall never die. Christ Jesus came into the world to make a, a show of, 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 of sin and destroy it. To make an example on the cross of the power of God and the enablement of God in his grace and his mercy to save people. Even the thief on the cross, one of them anyway, turn to him and says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the mercy of Christ, he turns to this man and he says, this day, this day, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus Christ came into the world to save you and to save me. I don't know about you, but I'm glad he saved me. The question that you must ask yourself tonight is this, do you really want to be saved? Are you happy to continue in your life of salvation? sin. Of anyone, anyone who wishes to come after Christ, you see, you need to give up of your sin. You need to deny yourself. You need to take up the cross and you need to follow him. Seeking to overcome self-effort, uh, self by self-effort is a hopeless struggle. Self will never cast out self. Because an independent, self-motivated by the flesh still wants to be God. We must follow Christ and be led by the Holy Spirit down the path of death to self-rule. As Paul wrote, we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also might be manifested in our mortal flesh. You know, you might be saying, well, this is a dismal path to walk. I want to assure you that it's not. It's the best life you'll ever experience. It's the only life you should be experiencing, the life with Christ. It's a tremendous experience to be known by the shepherd and to follow him as obedient, dependent sheep. The fact that we are led by the Spirit of God, even when it results in the death of self-rule, is our incredible assurance of our sonship. Our sonship. We are not designed to function independently of God. We never were. We can't the, the, the live independently. We make an absolute mess of things. Only when we are dependent on Him and intent on following Christ are we complete and free to prove that the will of God is good, acceptable and perfect. Oh, hallelujah. You can be absolutely sure of this truth. That when you come to Jesus Christ in deep humility, in repentance, he will forgive you of your sin. He will give you victory over sin. And he will make you a new creature in Christ. 
2 Corinthians 5 and 17 declares to us, Wherefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, they are, they are become new. That's the newness that Christ will bring. The change that he brings is remarkable. I've seen vile offenders transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Murderers have been saved. Homosexuals have been saved. Transgenders have been saved. Lesbians have been saved. Paramilitaries have been saved. Prison. People have been saved in prison. People have been saved in streets. Drug addicts have been saved. It's the power of the gospel. It's the wonderful power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As I said at the commencement of this message, the gospel works. The gospel works. I am proof that it works. Many watching tonight are proof that it works. You don't have to go to people with enticing words. You just have to go and preach the gospel. You know there's a the story in the book of Acts where, where Paul goes up onto Mars Hill and he looks around at all the inscriptions and all of the stones for all the different gods because the Greeks were great thinkers. They had a God for every circumstance, a God for every day and a God for every month. And in case they missed any gods out that they didn't bring a, a, at least a prayer to, they had this, this stone that said to the unknown God just in case they missed anyone out. And the apostle comes to these people and he looks at this stone. Do you notice what he didn't do? He didn't condemn the other gods. You sometimes you don't win battles by condemning. Let me say this to you again. You cannot condemn that which is already condemned. We haven't come to bring a message of condemnation. You might say you're getting liberal pastor. No I'm not. John 3 17. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be might be saved. And that's the that's the wonderful message of the gospel. That's what we are called to do. We're not called to condemn. Paul's on Mars Hill, he sees this unknown God, and then he turns to these philosophers and he says this is the God I want to speak to you about Jesus Christ whom they crucified and on the third day he rose again Paul preaches the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ he doesn't get into the debate about all these other gods you're just wasting your air you're wasting your breath debating about all these other gods you just preach the gospel you just tell people that Jesus died for their sins to save them and set them free from condemnation and on the third day he rose again you tell him about the power of the resurrection and because he lives you can live also because he was resurrection you know Molly Skegg sings that, that wonderful song in Bethel he walked out of the grave and I'm walking too we're walking too, you're walking too if you have Christ in your heart tonight, if you're saved tonight you will be resurrected into eternal glory he walked out of the grave because the Savior walked out of the grave. Guess what we are walking to? This is a message of hope. The message of hope is a needed message in the world today. We, we live in a dark time. We live in a time when the one world religion is kicking in. A one world currency is kicking in. The mark of the beast is not too far away. People are, 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 are suicidal with all these lockdowns. The pandemic that's sweeping across the nation. And the church has a message of hope. The church has a message of good news. Let's get the message out there. Let's share the good news. Let's tell people about the hope of glory. Let's tell them they can be a child of God. They can be forgiven. Let's tell them they can be saved by grace through faith. Let's tell them they can be a new creation. They can be justified just as if they've never sinned. Let's, let's begin to tell them that if they accept Christ, they can be an heir of eternal life. They can be led by the Spirit. They can be redeemed from the curse of the law. They can be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. They can be an heir of God and a co-heir with Christ. They can be blessed with every spiritual 
of God. They can now be when they receive Christ. Also the light of the world. They can be healed with his wounds. They can be transformed by the renewing of their minds. They can receive er, an heirship to the blessings of Abraham. They are more than conquerors. And they're able to do all things through him who strengthens them. This is a great message. It is a wonderful message. And the onus is on us to get it out there. That's the gospel. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we believe the gospel. And we will never cease to preach this gospel until he comes and if you're listening tonight and if you're not saved I implore you put your message Aaron or message me we'll pray with you we want you to be saved we want you to be a part of the kingdom of God we don't want you to be lost in eternal damnation in a place called hell we want you to go into heaven we want you to experience the freedom that Christ paid for on that cross don't allow the devil to rob you any longer don't allow him to rob you come on fight back call out to Christ repent of your sin receive him as saviour and and every one. May God keep you, may God save you, and may God cause his face to shine on you. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for Aaron, Aaron for having me tonight. I know that it didn't go as we planned it to go. He had to share from my Facebook page to his, but I just thank you for the opportunity. I love the gospel. I love preaching the gospel. May God bless you. Aaron's now going to go live on his Facebook page and sing a few songs or choruses. I'll share it on mine and make a few comments or whatever. Let me pray. Father, bless every year. We pray that the Holy Spirit would take the words and the words would find a resting place. That the Holy Spirit would convict, convince, convert. That Jesus Christ who's been lifted up would draw men, women, boys and girls onto him. And they would find him as saviour. Touch the sick, heal the sick, restore the backsliders. Bless the work and mark it hell, our Father God. Bless Aaron, touch him, heal him. Touch his dad, heal him. Touch the fellowship, heal them each and every one. And pour out a blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you one and all. God bless. Thank you for having me.